Hello, it's Christian the CTF Noob again, and today we're going to have a look at the 8th and last BMOF challenge from Over the Wire. This time we have to exploit and buffer overflow again, so let's get started with BMOF 7. As with all the Over the Wire challenges, we start by connecting to the challenge server via SSH, and then have a look at the provided challenge files. For the last challenge, it's again just the executable BMOF 7, so we run it. The program doesn't output anything. So we use ltrace as we did many times already and see what library functions the program calls. As always the program starts at libc start main and then calls string len on a string that looks like the definition of an nth variable. Then memset is used to zero out a memory address. The number of bytes that should be zeroed out is exactly the length of the string on which string len is executed. So we can assume that memset is used to zero out the environment variable. This happens multiple times for different environment variables. Probably we can define an environment variable ourselves and a program will zero it out too. So let's try it out. We define a new environment variable with, uh, with an arbitrary name and value since we don't need those for now. Then we use ltrace on the executable bmof7 again. This time the program starts by zeroing out our new defined environment variable so we can be sure that the program will zero out the complete environment. Okay, so we can't use the environment, but is there another way to interact with the executable? Maybe it also uses parameters. Let's try it out. We run bmof7 with ltrace again, but this time provide a parameter which contains four capital A's. Right before the executable stopped, string copy is used to copy our input string to a memory address we don't know. But we do know that string copy doesn't check the length of our input, and instead will keep copying characters until it sees a null byte. We should be able to overflow and probably also exploit this. When solving Narnia 2, we used a simple shell script to determine the number of input characters it takes to overflow the input buffer. With some adjustments, we should be able to reuse that script to determine how many characters it takes to overwrite a return address in BMOF 7. If you haven't seen my video on Narnia 2, I'll link it in the video description. So let's create a new temp directory in which we can create our new script. The script consists of a simple while loop that runs until BMOF 7 stopped with exit code 139. This is the case when a program sec falls. The rest is just increasing the number of characters in each iteration and calling the executable with capital A's as input. The resulting exit code is then saved in a variable to check it in the while condition. Now that we have the script, we have to make it executable and are finally able to run it. BMOF7 crashed at 528 input characters. Let's check that real quick. Okay, perfect. BMOF7 sack faults. Now we can continue in GDB and try to find a way to execute some shellcode. So we start GDB and then run BMOF7 with the 528 A's to overflow the buffer, followed by 4 B's, which should be the return address. And indeed the program sack faults because it can't execute what's at BBBB. So we know how to overwrite the return address, but where could we redirect execution? We know that the environment variables will be zeroed out but maybe we can use the 528 characters of padding to hold our shellcode. Let's try this out. We start by replacing the A's with hex 90s or knobs and run BMOF7 again. But it fails with the message non alpha chars found in string, possible shellcode. So the program checks our input for invalid characters, too bad. Starting with the shellcode is not an option, but what if we start our input string with the 528 A's to fill the buffer, then write the return address, and after that write our null slat. Does that work? We run BMOF7 again, this time again starting with the 528 A's, then come the 4 B's as return address, and then 100 knobs for our null slat. The program doesn't print the error message and simply set faults. That looks promising. Let's inspect the stack and see if we can find our knobs. We can see a couple of 41s, which are pad the padding of A's. Then comes the return address, which consists of 4 B's. And finally, we can see a lot of hex 90s, which are our knobs. So let's add some shellcode after the knobs led. 
As many times before, I used the one by Magnifico. After appending the shellcode, we run bmof7 again. The program still doesn't print any error message, and simply sec false. So let's find an address which is right in the middle of the knob sled. FFFFD44C seems to be a good candidate. So we have replaced the return address with that one and run bmof7 again. And we have a shell. Perfect. Now the only question is whether our exploit will work outside of GDB2. So we exit GDB and rebuild our exploit string. Then we run bmof7 again and we get a shell outside of GDB2. Nice! So we are able to guess the address inside the knob sled. Let's quickly check who we are with who am I. And since we are bmof8, read the blast password file for the bmof challenges. As with all the other videos, I hope that you found this video interesting and were able to learn something. The last challenge from bmof was quite simple, but a nice recap on buffer overflow exploits. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see me solving more CTF and wargame challenges, please subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notifications when I post new videos. If you have any questions, feedback or other challenges I should have a look at, now that I'm done with the BMOF series, feel free to leave a comment under the video below. Thank you and until next time.